Hey guys, uh, Adam here. Um, today I would like to just take a moment um, to have some, I guess, words of warning uh, about some things that I've seen pop up within the last maybe year or so uh, with some specific CPUs and maybe more specific a um, platform of CPUs that we have. And people are having some issues with it, and I'd like to resolve some of those issues um, with some knowledge that I have that you can find in other places, of course. Um, but if there's a video out there about it, it's probably going to be a bit easier for some people to find it. Um, and this is the cheap Xeon E7 um, 8800 series uh, V2s that you can find on eBay. Um, and the E7 4000 series V2. So, this, this family, the, right here, all of any of these, any of the E7 V2s. And, so any of the E7 V2s that say they're on LGA 2011. Now, the reason why this is going to be a word of warning is because if you go out and you find these CPUs on eBay, they say LGA 2011. Um, and a lot of people are buying these CPUs, and you can go get them really cheap. You can go get a 12-core right here. I have one of these myself. You can go get one of these, this specific model. 15 cores, 30 threads. 2.8 gigahertz base. That's a decent amount of power for, like, $200. You, you can find them sometimes, and it's really cheap. So people are buying these um, because they, they seem like a really good value. And they do. They, they do honestly seem like a really good value. And they seem like they're on a cheap socket. Um, LJ2011. So in this case, we would think of um, X79, right? So like E5, 1620, V2, V1, something like that. That kind of socket, X79. Not X99. And we're going to go into that in a minute. Um, and the reason why this is a word of warning is because that's not actually correct. Um, so... This is what's up. Is it says on, on Intel's page, for instance, it says FCL GA 2011, right? So you would think, okay, X79, LGA 2011, like we just talked about. Um, and if we go on to something that is X79, LGA 2011, we're going to see the same thing, FCL GA 2011. And so theoretically, even by Intel's own page, they, they are compatible. You can use them in the same socket. And that's what people are, are thinking, because on the eBay pages and everything, because Intel says they're the same socket, on eBay they're saying the same socket. Um, but the problem is that they're actually not the same socket. Physically, they, they're not the same. They don't have the same pinout. Um, even if technically they go on the same... I, I believe these E7 B2s go on... Um, uh, 602J, C602J chipsets, and the E5s, V2s, go on the, uh, just 602, um, even though it's the same 2011. So, what's happening is people are buying these, not realizing that they don't work on sockets that they think they do, and buying them. Um, and the reason why this is, is because Intel never designed them to be used on these sockets like this. Um, they, they're specifically made for proprietary uses, like in OEM blade servers, um, supercomputers, stuff like that. And on Intel's page, as we just discussed, it doesn't say anything different, right? FCLGA 2011, and then if we go on to this one, it's, it's the same thing, FCLGA 2011. Um, but if we go on to CPU world, we're going to see that there is now a difference on there. Um, so, socket FC LGA 2011, but here, FCL socket 2011-1, so LGA 2011-1. And if we go on to the E5, it is yeah, right here, F, uh, socket 2011, yeah, let's go to this one, yeah, socket 2011, right? Um, so, what, what's the catch here, right? 
it even even socket R1. So some of these are saying socket R1, which is that it's technically this socket, but it's also th this socket as well. The difference being that this F LGA 2011 is that proprietary um, blade server socket, right? And so this right here, so these E5 4640 V2s, or that generation anyway, E5 V2s, E5 V1, they're going to go on FCLGA 2011-0, okay? And these E7s are going to go on LGA 2011-1. And these V3s are going to go on, um, depending on where you look, it'll be LGA 2011-3 or dash 2, depending on where you go. Um, I've seen those two interchangeably. Um, so, just a bit of a warning there, and I'm going to show you what they look like as well. So this is the E7 V2. It's a lot bigger, and the main difference is the pin layout is a little bit different, and these right here, as you're going to see in the next one, they don't they don't line up correctly. And I don't, it doesn't happen here totally, because this isn't totally right, but you can see a pretty big difference between these chips. Um, these are a lot bigger, and they, they definitely don't fit, even if sometimes they look like they do. Um, so just a word of warning, if, if you can find, I know there's, I've only seen, in the past year, I've only seen two motherboards that actually worked for these E7s. But again, they're blade server motherboards, proprietary. Um, you know, that can take four to eight CPUs, and that's not what most of these people are looking for. Most of these people are looking for a single to dual socket motherboard that can fit in an ATX tower, because that's what they assume it is, because they think it's 2011 X79. Um, but it's but it's not. Um, so just a word of warning. Um, if if you happen to have one of these motherboards, great, go for it. But obviously you don't, because you you're not really gonna have one unless you actually already enter are in a data center and stuff. In which case, it, it doesn't matter, you know. Um, but if you're somebody just looking for a cheap CPU, um, stay away from these E7s, V2s. There isn't really any motherboards from out there, like at all. There really isn't. And even those 4 to 8 socket boards, um, even those are 6 to $700 easy. <clears throat> only, I only even saw one listing on eBay. So really, don't buy them unless you do want to shell out some money and mess with a blade server. Hey, go for it. Um, I thought about it, but for me... Um, for my use case, it isn't worth it right now. Maybe it will be one day if I get a rack um, and a space to put it. But and the price comes out on the motherboards. But really, I don't I don't see it happening. Um, so just a word of warning. Um, just be careful. And in the end, these these E5 V2s, they they are actually really good. I I just bought myself this one right here actually um, for my hypervisor. I mean, it ain't crazy 10 cores at 2.2, but that's the cheap one. That's 100 bucks, And you can go get ones that are... I mean, you can go get an E5 26... Like a 2680 V2 at 10 cores, and it'll... The base will be 2.8. And it'll turbo across all cores like 3.1. And that ain't crazy considering today's terms, but 3.1 across all cores, across 10 cores, for $180. And it's still only 150 watts, I think. 115 watts, I think that is, for that uh, for that chip. That's still pretty good. So if you're gonna get <clears throat> one of these Uzeons, stick to the E5 V2s. Um, the E5 V1s are fine, but the E5 V2s are coming down in price now to be about the same thing. Um, and they'll use a lot less power, and you can get more cores, and the higher they have higher frequencies anyway. Um, so if you can get a V2, if you if you can get, if you have an X79 motherboard, you want something nice. Um, go get look at like an E5. You can go get it at 650s for pretty cheap. I mean, uh, 1650 V2 something like that. Although right now the I actually the I7 um, Extreme Editions for that socket are actually really cheap right now. Not sure how long that'll last. Um, it goes it been elite frogging. But you know whatever floats your boat. If you want something a little bit more cores, you can get those really cheap. Um, so thanks for watching. Just a word of caution on these CPUs. Uh, as always, see ya.